to get right into it. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses uh, uh, 5 and 6. And this is what it says out of the message. And the message, it works like this. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Amen. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Amen. Listen to God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. I'm actually going to continue down just a little bit longer. Uh, uh, um, it says, don't assume that you know it all. And I love this. Run to God. Yeah. Run from evil. And check this out now. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Amen. Somebody here needed to hear that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Run to God. Run from evil. And imagine how your body is going to begin to glow in health. Yeah. Praise Amen. Lord. That your bones are going to begin to vibrate with life. You don't have to be crippled and, and down and out. You don't have to be walking around in depression. Run to God. Run from evil. And you'll right. be amazed at the health that will begin to turn around in your yeah. life. And the NIV uh, uh, words it like this. Trust the Lord your God with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. He will make your path straight. That's right. Other That's translations right. say. Now church, check this out, man. I want to know, man, what kind of influence that you have in this world. Come on. What kind of influence do you have in your community? What kind of an influence do you have in your church? Most importantly, what kind of an influence do you have in your home? It's good. There was a, a, a Special Olympic, boom, boom, Special <laughs> Olympic track meet. Praise the Lord. And, and the gun goes off, and all the runners begin to sprint for the finish line. And then all of a sudden, one of the runners falls down. And then something absolutely wonderful begins to take place. Every single runner suddenly stopped, turned around, and acknowledged the down runner and ran back to the fallen runner to pick him up. Can you imagine? The influence that we would begin to have on our brothers and sisters and in this world. Yeah. If when we seen somebody who had fallen down, we pick them up instead of pointing yeah. a finger and begin to laugh at them. So they pick him up because they realize what? They realize that no tr trophy was worth winning. That's right. When we see a fallen brother or sister down right behind us. So they turn back around to go and pick this fallen brother up. The influence that those runners had on absolutely everyone. Everybody who was on the track, everybody who was running, everybody who was uh, 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 watching that day. Truth be told, you know that you know that you know that not everybody in the stands understood That's right. yeah. why not one runner at least ran to the finish line. <laughs> right? It was an easy win. Yeah. The runners themselves may not have completely understood why they didn't no longer have the drive to win, but they had the drive to pick up a fallen brother. Yeah. So that indeed they could all come down as winners. The influence that day that they had on everyone in the stands, the influence that day that they had on themselves uh, through Holy Spirit, the, that's what I believe who was doing it, the influence that they had not to win, but indeed to community Amen. win. By picking up their down brother is absolutely Amen. amazing. Yeah. And in that deed, that day, indeed, everybody did win. That's why I wear my Special Olympics shirt, man, in honor of what took place that day. Amen. Because it was absolutely mind-blowing. Special Olympics for mental or physically uh, uh, disabled. But yet their mindset is absolutely marvelous. Yes. Yeah. Because let's just be real for a second. If I'm in a race with you and you trip, <laughs> easy peasy Japanese, baby, I'm going to win. <laughs> Right? I mean, let's just be real for a second. But praise the Lord really? that they have that. I might even trip you. That's me. You know what I'm saying? But that mindset, man, that when, boom, someone went down and they pumped the brakes to turn around to pick up their brother. So they can all walk across that finish line, man, is awesome. Amen. Because the truth be told, man, we're going to influence people in one of two ways. We're going to influence people to follow their own ways. And we can influence, man, them to do the things that they want to do. Do the things of the world. Don't worry about who you step on, who you crush, who you push out the way. Don't worry about that. You do you. I'm going to get mine. You're going to get yours. 
You know what I'm saying? So we, we can influence people in that type of a mindset. Do whatever it is that you want to do. Make sure that you come out on top. Or you can influence people to follow Christ. And truth be told, man, can I just be real with Christians for a minute? Talk to me. It, <laughs> amen, sis. It drives me crazy when Christians be like, well, when you follow Christ Jesus, you don't get to do what you want to do anymore. To be a Christian. That's crazy. Do you know that 90 to 95% of the time I get to do what I want That's to do? Right. Because when he abides in me and I abide in him, yeah. what he desires, I desire. Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Now, make no mistake, we have to die to ourselves yeah. so that we can live for him. Yeah. But when we live for him, what he wants to do in me, I yeah. want to do. Right. Now, yes, I do have to fight back the flesh to, yeah. to not do some of the things oh, that I want to yeah. do or say some of the things that I want to say. Yeah. Or punch yeah. some of the people in the throat that you would just love to. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> But 90 to 95% of the time, I get to do, I live an awesome, blessed life. I have a wonderful, beautiful wife, an amazing son, an awesome family, a wonderful church family. I am a highly blessed man. When we influence others to live to Christ, we're not trying to influence them to live this life. You know what I'm saying? It's, I gotta live the life of Jesus. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what it's about, man. That's right. That's the mindset that we have to begin to get into Good. is to let people know that I live an awesome life in Jesus. Yes, sir. And if you would simply follow me, then what the Holy that follow me, as Paul says, is I follow Christ. That's right. And you will begin to see that what Holy Spirit wants to do inside of you, you are going to begin to then want to do those things. Amen. I remember, man, talking to many people uh, uh, hooked on drugs or pornography, whatever it is, and they're like, man, so I gotta stop all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm but my first response is, no, you don't. Yeah. Right. You can. That's right. That's or you right. wouldn't have been right here. Exactly. Right. You know what I'm exactly. But no, you don't have to stop all that. Holy Spirit will. Amen. And he'll begin to change your desires. He'll begin to change your wants. Right. And those things you used to That's think so you wanted, you will begin to realize you don't want Amen. those anymore. Amen. So you'll be able to walk away from them. Right. It's awesome, man, what Holy Praise Spirit will do. The world teaches, man, don't worry about people. Smash all over them. Step all over them. Push them out the way. We, too, don't worry about people. Love them. Pick them up along Amen. the way. And indeed, as you're changing your life, the Holy Spirit, allow them to grab a hold of you. Sometimes they need someone to lean on. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. They're not strong enough to stand on their own two legs yet. So allow them to lean on you and let Holy Spirit begin to change them as well. We begin to realize, man, when we have been influenced by, by a Christian brother or sister, we're being influenced daily by Holy Spirit, that no, our life is not our own anymore. And every single one of us, praise the Lord, has a mission. And our mission can be extremely powerful, or our mission can be a very uh, 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 devastating, if you would. Devastating to everyone around you or powerful to everyone around you. We can help people succeed in school. We can help people succeed in work. We can help marriages succeed. We can help addicts get off of whatever it is that they're addicted to, whether it be drugs or gossip. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? So we can help them get off that. We can help people in life in the mighty name of Jesus or... We could choose to see people flop around like a fish out of water and do absolutely nothing about it. Mm. But the truth is, church, we have been born to serve. Yeah, that's right. Amen. We've been born to love. Amen. We've been born, man, to make an impact. We have been born to be an influence in an insane way. Yeah. So what kind of an influence are you being? I'll never forget, man, some of the most influential people uh, uh, in my life growing up. Uh, my brother-in-law, Johnny Justice, who is not here because he is doing termites and cockroaches and bed bugs right now. <laughs> <laughs> not in his house, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's what he does for oh, it. Right, but uh, so he's not home. Uh, he's not in church man, right now. He's out there on the streets, man, uh, with his uh, marketplace ministry to God be the glory. But, um, but what's cool, man, is, is I know how to treat my beautiful bride because Johnny has influenced me from the time I was 14 years old and showed me how to treat Amen. my Amen. My father has influenced me and taught me, man, how to take a stand for what is right and for what is wrong. Amen. And put your foot down when people are trying to do wrong. 
Amen. and encourage people to do right. My mother has influenced me and she has taught me, man, how to truly love no matter what. Amen. My sister does. I ask you love her anyway. Love her anyway. Mom, are you crying? Yes, sister. Mom, are you back there? Yes, sister. You know what I'm saying? I've that my whole life. Yes, sister. She didn't get to us. I'm able to say that. But well, praise the Lord. But my sister, man, has influenced me from the time that I could remember to even to this day to always believe in myself. And man, it's changed my life growing up, man. And now to God be the glory, man, I have an amazing, beautiful wife. Thank you, Jesus, who influences me every single day. She influences me every day, man. Just to watch her as she digs in and seeks Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. She influences me, man, and teaches me how to love tenderly, how to love deeply. Watching her, man, I get influenced on how to be an amazing spouse, how to be a wonderful parent to our awesome son, man. It's absolutely awesome. I'm surrounded, Pastor Rob, and, and, and Node, and Whiteside, and Aaron, and, and I'm surrounded by so many people, Jeremiah, who, who influence me. To go harder in the Lord. To go deeper in the Lord, man. I am surrounded daily by people who I can be influenced from. And it's absolutely awesome. And I pray that everything that I have been influenced in and am continuing to be influenced in, that I will then turn around and influence my son. That I will influence him not just now, but for the rest of his life. But in order for me to truly be the influence that I want to be to my wife, that I want to be to my BFFs. That I want to be to, that I want to be to the church. That I want to be, man, to my son. What I have to do is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 it every single day. I have to trust in the Lord from the bottom of my heart. How many of you know that that's so hard to do? I have to stop relying on myself to figure everything out. How many of you know that that is so hard to do? And all the ladies said, amen. Come on. Don't do it. <laughs> it's absolutely insane that I have to stop listening to my voice yeah. and start listening to the voice amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. That sweet Holy Spirit. But guys, come on. How many of you would admit that that so many times seems so hard to do? Mm, yeah. See, the truth is I understand me. Yeah. I get me. I know what turns me off. I know what turns me on. I know what ticks me off. I know what makes me happy. I know what makes me sad. I know what makes... I understand me. I don't always, however, understand him. And how many of you know that when you don't understand something, it can be so difficult to step into something when you don't understand it? Yeah. When you don't understand what's going to happen if I take this step, sometimes it's hard to take that step. When you don't understand what the outcome is going to be, when you don't understand why he's leading you here, when you don't understand why he's leading you down this path, sometimes going that way becomes hard to do. Mm -hmm. But that's where the trust comes Amen. in. That's where we got to trust yeah. him from the bottom of our heart. Yeah. Because when we trust God with all of our heart, then we can have the confidence, yeah. not understanding it, right. but then we can have the confidence to step into any Amen. situation. Good. And we can understand that we don't have to understand yeah. it in order to step into it. Right. Because if we are trusting God from the bottom of our heart, then we are understanding that God is under control. You understand? Know right. right. you know and that is indeed what it is that we have to begin to rely on. To allow Holy Spirit to influence us. That even when we don't understand, we step. Every single day of our lives, we are allowing someone to influence us. And to have someone influence you, man, means that you completely let go of self and you allow them to begin to influence you and they can influence you on a so to the point where you will begin to live your life like the one that you are allowing to influence you. Growing up, man, in the streets of Newport News, so many of us would want to be gangbangers, right? Yeah. Want to be thugs, <laughs> right? Look at the streets here, man, talking about, I'm thug, you ain't thug, man, there's any of <laughs> Praise the Lord, you have some. 
Kira was, was a straight street dog. You know what I'm saying? Praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit who changed his life. But some of these young bucks come up. Louisy and Little Sneezy, man. Get up out of my way. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You ain't step boy. You just trap boy. Come on, somebody. But then we begin to allow people to influence us, and because they influence us, man, I'll never forget, man, uh, um, a, 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 a police officer was shot and killed. And they were blaming it on the music that this individual was listening to. But the music he was listening to was influencing him right. so much that he thought he was somebody that he wasn't. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we can allow things to influence us yeah. and things can influence us so deep yeah. that we begin to live out the very right. thing that is influencing us. So it can influence us for the good and it can influence us for the bad. What yes. indeed are we allowing to influence our lives? Because when we're under the influence, Indeed, it is no longer us, yeah. Yeah. but it is indeed what it is that is influencing us. For the most powerful and influential days of my life were not about me. Mm. Number one, man, when I was able to marry, man, I prayed. But listen, I asked, I tell you guys all the time, I asked Sunday to marry me three times and all, finally the third time, <laughs> she's like, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. But I'll never forget, man. Uh, hey, I'll take it. Thank you, Jesus. You know but, but that day, man, it wasn't about me. It's about my girl, man. Amen. I was so romantic, dude. We went down to the justice of the peace. <laughs> <laughs> Not about me, baby. It's all about you. <laughs> but praise the Lord, man. Some people concentrate on the wedding. We concentrate on what happened after the wedding. Hey, come on, stop. Stop it. Come on. Not about me. It's all about her. <laughs> <laughs> the day, man, that I gave my life to Christ Jesus, I had to realize it's not about me anymore. But indeed, it is all about Him. The day that He told us to plant this church, we realized, ah, oh, who? Ain't about us anymore. <laughs> It's about him. It's Amen. about loving him. It's about serving Baby him. Jesus. It's about loving his people and serving yes. his people. Yes. And the last one was the day that my baby boy was born. Come on, yeah. man. You think life's about yourself? Have a child. And all the parents said, Amen. 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 It's crazy. But those days, you have to realize that indeed it is not about you. You. Yeah. Being a husband, being a Christian, being a pastor, being a father. There are so many things right now, and there are going to be things to the day that I step into glory that I will not understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it is in those times that I have to, in all things, but especially in those times, yeah. I have to lean not on my own understanding, Amen. but indeed Amen. acknowledge Jesus Christ, trust in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. See, I'm learning not to get down when church attendance isn't where it is that I think it should be. I don't understand why so many people claim that they love the church so much, but yet then it comes so difficult to get people to actually volunteer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how people can say that they believe in the church so much, but yet then they're not faithful tithers. Yep. And I guess the Holy Spirit just answered my question. They're not faithful. They're not full of Amen. faith. Because it takes somebody who is full of faith to actually Amen. begin to acknowledge and trust the Lord your God with all of your heart in all situations. But I don't understand why I don't have a rehab out of this church yet. Why we don't have a homeless shelter up out of this church yet. But what I do have to do is trust in the Lord with all of my heart and acknowledge Him and understand that He will indeed begin to direct our paths in the those dreams. I don't understand why some kids get sick, man. I don't understand why some kids get illnesses that eventually end up taking their lives. I don't understand how a monster can begin to rip out some child's innocence. I don't get it why some people get sick from cancer and get healed, why other people get sick from cancer and die. I don't understand why 
Good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. I don't understand how it is that we can sit in the safety of our church and sit in the safety of our homes while a woman, a boy, or a girl, or a child right now is being sold to some pervert. I do not understand why the gay boy or the lesbian girl gets ripped apart, not just from the world, but also from the church. I do not understand how people can be forgotten, how people can be pushed aside, how people can be looked over. I don't get why so many people are called misfits. I don't get why so many people are called outsiders. I don't get why so many people, man, are, 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 are just shoved over stepped over like they are absolutely garbage. I don't understand how somebody can never have a child, but yet then somebody else can get pregnant just simply by you walking by them, and all they want to do is abort those babies. I don't understand how people can begin to step over the man who just OD'd on the street corner as if he was a piece of trash. And I don't understand how we can begin to look at the homeless person uh, as he is a disgusting monster and walk on by him as if we don't even see him. Church, I don't understand because in all of those things, I have to acknowledge everybody because in my acknowledging them, I'm acknowledging the God inside of them. Even if they don't acknowledge the God inside themselves, I have to acknowledge it inside of them because that's exactly what happened to me. When I was a nobody, when I was heading down the wrong path, somebody recognized the God inside of me Amen. and saved me Amen. from getting charges pressed upon me. Amen. I have to. We have no choice but to acknowledge the God inside of people. And when we acknowledge that, we acknowledge our God. Amen. I do not, church, understand. I do not understand so many things. I don't understand why so many days I want to love everyone I come across. And then other days I want to choke slam everyone. <laughs> I, I do not understand. I don't understand why people who I don't even let speak into my life. That some days I let their rumors, their lies, and their gossip affect my life. Wow. But when I think of all of these things, and so much more that I honestly do not understand, Holy Spirit always brings me back to a quote that I have written down, that I learned from Pastor Matthew Barnett, that says this, man, it's absolutely awesome. God ministered it to him, and I believe Holy Spirit ministers it to me, man, almost every time I get in one of those mindsets. You quote, you can't always control your position, but you can control your disposition. You can control your attitude. Yep. Love your city. Love your community. And let me build the church. Amen. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Listen, you want your life to change forever. I guarantee, guarantee, that I could give you 12 words that are guaranteed to change your life 100% forever. Amen. Come on. Write them down. Here they are. This is going to be deep. <laughs> In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. I love it. Amen. Scripture. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Guaranteed to change your life. The problem is, oftentimes, we're standing on the opposite side of the path. We're trying to be the director when we are not called to be the director. He is called to be the director. And we wonder why when we are stepping into the directing position, why everything, is, can you imagine if I began to get up there and was like, <laughs> people not gonna know how to play. They'd be like, what is he doing? You know what I'm saying? Come to see you. But that's the same thing, man. When we get, when we step into that directing position that is not ours to begin with, it's God's. And when we try to play God, I promise it's always 
going to go yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. promise. In all of your ways, acknowledge him yeah. and he shall direct your path. Amen. No matter where you're at in life, no matter what it is that you're going through in life, those 12 words will forever change your life. We don't have to understand this. We don't have to understand that. We don't have to lean on our knowledge yeah. and praise the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Y'all relied on my knowledge, y'all would be in trouble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, myself and Pastor Rodman had a beautiful opportunity on Friday morning, man, to do a memorial service for uh, Mr. Paul Tolley, man, who uh, went home to be with Jesus, 35 years old, died of cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, praise the Lord, though, but afterwards, man, it was so cool because uh, uh, you guys remember uh, wrestling and you had a tag team? Mm -hmm. You know the road warriors? <laughs> well, you guys are awesome. But um, uh, anyways, man, me and Pete Rodman watched the road, road warriors the other day, man. We were tag teaming this memorial service. Right, we start off, bah, 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 and then P Rock comes in, bah, 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 you know what I'm saying? And we were just tag teaming these people, man, in the mighty name of Jesus. And what's so cool is afterwards, this gentleman come up who was obviously shaken, and he just, be, you know, he says, man, thank you so much, man. Uh, uh, um, you know, this this has uh, really touched me. And he began to name some people that he knows that come to the church and seeing the changes in them. And uh, uh, P Rock goes, well, you know who's changing them? Not us, it's Jesus. And he goes, yeah, you know, they, they be telling me all kinds of stuff. And, and uh, um, I love it when you're talking to real people because real people don't care about a position. Yeah. They don't care about a title. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like some people are like, I'll tell you what, you M F or Oh, sorry. You know, I didn't mean to offend you, but he's like, man, this effing thing and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if you're in, hey, come on, though. But if you're in the Lord, that's not going to offend you. Amen. Real Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because truth be told, you said it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he's just talking real, man. You know what I mean? And then I love it. Pete Rob goes, man, let me ask you a question. Have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? <laughs> and he kind of chuckled and he goes, man, I've been a self proclaimed atheist my whole life. Wow. And P. Rob's next thing is, well, man, I want you to know, self proclaimed atheist or not, that Jesus is hey, madly in love with you. That's right. Good job. And listen, his response was awesome. <laughs> he said, you know what? And that's the only thing that I understand. Right. Wow. 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 That's the only thing I'm saying, which begins to show you that he's not an atheist because right. he don't believe right. in Jesus. Yeah. He's an atheist because he don't believe in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. But so what Holy Spirit then began to put on my heart, man, was I told him, I said, you know what, dude, then that's the only thing that you need to understand. Amen. I told him, I said, there's things that myself and Pastor Rob don't understand. There's things we don't understand about religion, praise the Lord. But I said, but that's not, uh, I said, that's why we don't follow religion. We right. follow that's Jesus. Right. See, we don't have to understand everything. All we have to do is acknowledge him. Amen. And scripture says what? Scripture says that he will make us do everything else. No, scripture don't say that. It's, scripture says that he's going to leave us on our own if we acknowledge him. No, scripture don't say that. Scripture says that he's going to begin to do the directing. Right, he will begin, as Romans 8, 28 says, he will begin to work out the good yep. in every situation when we acknowledge him. Amen. When we lean not on our own understanding, he will direct our paths. We don't do anything. He does the hard yeah. work. Yeah. All we simply have to do is be willing to be directed. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And if we're willing to be directed, he'll direct us. If we're willing to walk, he's going to indeed show us where to walk. If we're willing to pick a path, he will lead us to the path that he wants us to pick, the path that's going to bless us in an insane, crazy way. If we're willing to listen, he will direct us with his voice. God's doing the work. All we're simply doing is acknowledging him. I mean, have you ever watched them guys, man, at the airport? They're on the grounds, right? And they got them cool little flashlight things. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was doing all these things. You're like, <laughs> I do one time. It was like, I was like, that is awesome. You know, I don't know what he just told the guy. That's all. Awesome. You know, they begin to direct. They're directing these pilots, man. They're doing all the work on the ground. You know, we think to ourselves, man, these pilots are so awesome. And yeah, praise the Lord for them. But you want to know who's doing the work on the ground, man? It's them dudes with them funny little flashlight things. <laughs> <laughs> the, the news flash is, man, airplanes have no rear view mirrors. Right, yeah. mm. How do they know where to back up and which direction <laughs> to go to? They ain't got no fancy little cameras on the back of. I've been on some of these planes. <laughs> they got fancy anything in Jesus' name. 
You know what I'm saying? But, but what it is, man, it's those guys on the ground with those flashlight things that is indeed directing them. They're telling the pilot where to go, to go forward, to go backwards, to go left, to go right. They're telling them to stop, to go. They are directing them, and all the pilot has to do is acknowledge yep. and allow them. Yep. Flashlight guys. To, <laughs> to indeed direct their paths. Just like when the plane's in the air. And they, they land, and everyone's like, oh, man, that pilot, man, they got us there with no problem. It wasn't the pilot. It's air traffic control. <laughs> they have to acknowledge air traffic control because air traffic control is letting them know where other planes are and in the area, and they're keeping other planes out, and they're not letting this take off when your plane's trying to come down and land. It's air traffic control. But what the pilot has to do is acknowledge. Yeah and allow them to direct their path because if they stop acknowledging and if they stop allowing the uh, air traffic control or flashlight guy thingies uh, begin to direct their path, I promise you it's going to be a disaster. But simply because they acknowledge and they allow them to direct their path, you have a safe flight. Simply because they acknowledge, and I promise you if we acknowledge Christ, if we lean not on our own understanding, but acknowledge Christ and all we do, trust in Him with all of our heart and allow Him to direct our paths, I promise you, you'll have a safe life. God, amen. Amen. Yeah, you might hit some turbulence. Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I promise you in Jesus' name, you will have a safe flight Hallelujah. if you do that. Yeah. But if you do not, if you do not acknowledge Christ Jesus, if you do not trust him, if you do not lean uh, uh, not on your understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, I promise you, your life will become a disaster. Yeah. It might not yet be, but I promise you that it will be. Yes, sir. Just like, just like the air traffic control. If the pilots don't acknowledge them, those planes are going to come crashing down. If you don't acknowledge Christ. You don't trust him with all your heart. Acknowledge yeah. him. Lean not on your own understanding, but on his. Then I promise you, so too will your life come crashing down. Yeah. My life came crashing down one day. I'm sitting in the shower in Greensboro, wondering just how I could completely get rid of all of my pain. Mm -hmm. But when you begin to acknowledge yeah. him, you, then your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. My dreams took on a totally different form. My life <laughs> took on a totally different form. I wasn't pursuing things like I had been. Now I was pursuing him and wondering how I could fall more in love with him daily. And now that I do that, he allows me to fall more in love with my wife daily, more in love with my son daily, more in love with you guys daily. And it's all by pursuing him. Hallelujah. He indeed wants to direct us and now when he begins to direct us he gives us so many tools to begin to help others along the way what are we pursuing if it's not jesus then we're pursuing the wrong, wrong thing yeah. and we're only pursuing jesus if we acknowledge him in everything that we do yeah. Yeah. you know when it's a dangerous game for the devil not only walk around our chest puffed up and I'm a sanctified saint and I'm this and I'm that and blah, 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 blah. that's awesome and praise God for your confidence keep it and speak it and believe it but when you're a real terror for the devil it's not even when you're pursuing your dreams but when you're pursuing Christ yeah. and when you're acknowledging yes, him because when you're pursuing him, trusting in him with all of your heart, and acknowledging him, then he will begin to unlock dreams in your heart that you never even knew that you had. Right. And when he begins to unlock those dreams, you best believe that's when sheer terror, okay. hell, gets scared into the yeah. enemy. Mm -hmm. And he don't want none of you in the mighty name yeah. of Jesus. When we begin to seek Christ like that. Yeah. But those dreams will only come to be when we begin to pursue when we begin to acknowledge and we all have the ability I'm totally unqualified in every mission every task that my Savior gives me I'm unqualified to be her husband I'm unqualified to be E.G.'s daddy I am unqualified to be your pastor but man isn't that when we really begin to live Amen. <laughs> right? Amen. Yeah. 
when we have to not hope for a miracle, but when we have to depend yes, on sir. a miracle, on. Yeah. that's when yeah. in life begins to happen. Now, don't understand me. We don't pursue the miracle. Yeah. We yeah. pursue the miracle maker. Yeah. Right, right. Right. We pursue right. Christ Jesus. But it will be in our pursuing that the miraculous will have to acknowledge that yeah. we are pursuing the miracle maker. Right. And now the, the miraculous begins to pursue you Amen. and you will be swamped filled slap silly with all kinds of miracles in your life that you will in an awesome way not be able to understand Amen. outsiders we are outsiders for Christ Jesus and we should be influencing people in such a way that we see to it that their dreams come true yeah. we go to work for a purpose we make money for a purpose we influence for a purpose Sometimes the dreams you have is not even about yourself. Sometimes the dream you have is for somebody else who thinks that they're too dead to begin to dream again. We have to begin to feed the hungry, lay hands on the downcast, so that indeed they'll be encouraged to raise up, raise the dead, heal the sick. No, we don't understand the calling. No, we don't always understand the mission. No, we don't always understand the path that he's calling us to. But you know what? We're not supposed to. Amen. We're not supposed to because if we did, then we would begin to acknowledge the call. We begin to acknowledge the mission. Right. We begin to acknowledge the path. We're not called to acknowledge those That's things. Right. We are called to acknowledge him. Yes, sir. That's what we're called to do. And the best way that you can be an influence to anybody is acknowledging Jesus. Yeah. Trusting him with all of your heart. And being Christ in the flesh. Christ in motion. Falling in love every day with giving your life away. Falling in love every day with giving your dreams away. Falling in love every day with giving your joy away to every person that is standing in front of you. Life is simple, man. Make life better for those who are around you. Yeah. Make life better for those who are still living. And that's what outsiders are called to do. We are called. I'm so busy. Yeah, well, you know what? You're called to be less busy. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times Christians think that the busier we are, the holier we are. Right. <laughs> I'm so holy. Why? Dude, I got something going on every night this week. <laughs> but yet not one time are they seeking Holy Spirit in one of the things that they're doing. We are called to make a difference in our communities, to make a difference in this world, to make a difference in our homes. Yes, we have jobs. Yes, we all have to earn a living. One hundred percent. That's part of life. But if we're not acknowledging Christ in that, if we're not acknowledging God's people in that, then we are doing it one hundred percent wrong. In everything we do, we should first trust the Lord with all of our heart. We should acknowledge Him in everything and know that we don't have to lean on our own understanding, but in our acknowledging Him, He is going to indeed direct our paths. That's right. No matter what it is. No matter what you're going through, just acknowledge him, man. Trust him, and I promise you, he's got you. Amen. Amen. Good word. It does not. Man, love God. Love people. Love life. Amen. Trust him, man. That's what he's asking for you. And if you do that, I promise you, you will make a difference. We read about people all the time, and, and, and we see these people doing this, and we see those people doing that, and we're like, man, I want that. Well, you know how they got that. Uh, 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 my message all the time, you may see my glory, but you don't know my story. That's right. That's right. That took a whole lot of trust him yes, to get to where he is. Mm -hmm. whole lot of trust him to get to where I am. A whole lot of trust him to get to where Pastor Rob is. And you know his story. You know what I'm saying? But now, in some of the stories you know, are you now acknowledging the glory that took place in the story? Because yeah. there's a whole lot of trusting. There was a whole lot of acknowledging. There was a whole lot of not leaning on his own understanding to get to where it is that he is at right now. If it was his own understanding, you standing, I promise he wouldn't be here. We have to begin to seek scripture. Those 12 words will forever change the rest of your life. You are a big deal. You are amazing. You are spe you're holy, you're righteous, you're redeemed, you're, you're powerful in Christ Jesus. Some of us just don't know it. Yeah. Right. There's somebody out there, man, who needs you in a desperate way. Yeah. 
We have to begin to live that way. We have to begin to give our life away first to Christ, then to people, man, so that indeed they can see how good God is, that they can taste and see how good God is. Now, we, we're not going to always understand. I can have my worship team come up. We're not going to always understand, man, some of the people that he asks us to love. The world tells us, man, do whatever it is that you have to do to get to where it is that you need to get. Lie on others. Push others aside. Step on whoever you got to step on. Sleep with whoever you got to sleep with to get on top. Hashtag no pun intended. <laughs> but that's what the world begins to teach. That when you're an outsider, when you are an acknowledger of Christ Jesus, we begin to seek out Holy Spirit and we ask him, Lord, who today can I lift up? Lord Jesus, who today can I be a blessing to? Jesus, who today will you send my way that I can tell them how good you are? Yeah. Jesus, who today can I share my financial blessing with? Yeah. Jesus, who today can I share my food with? Jesus, who today can I share my clothes with? Jesus, yeah. who today can I share my faith with? And no, we don't always understand it when the person that we see coming our way is the person that we despise the most. Come on now. Now we just prayed, Jesus sent some of my way, and now we start going the opposite way because the person coming our way, we didn't want to come our way. Now we don't always understand. Yes, but I promise you, there is a purpose. Yes, sir. Even for he who gets under your skin. Even for the one that you despise, the one you don't like, truth be told, oftentimes it's the one just like us. Right? Yeah. We to trust in the Lord and everyone he sends us. That you're sending me this person for a reason. Now have the, the gift of discernment because just like Holy Spirit will send you people, so too will the enemy. Amen. Right. So have the gift of discernment. Good. Some people want to drain you. Some people want to waste your yeah. time. Yeah. But you can say, proof be gone in a loving way. <laughs> 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 but a lot that Christ is going to have us do on the path that he is going to begin to direct us makes no sense but that's what being an outsider is an outsider from Christ our life makes no sense because we become selfless we realize that the only way that we truly live is when we begin to allow other people to live by ministering the gospel well, I tell you one thing, I'm fed up with hypocritical Christians. I love this quote. The quote is, you're going to church looking for the example. But you're supposed to be the example. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Stop looking for others to be the example. Christ is your example, Amen. so now you start being that example. Amen. Come on, somebody. We'll be amazed at what will begin to take place. Again, I close. The gun goes off. All the runners begin to sprint to the finish line. One runner falls down. And suddenly, every single runner on that track stops, turns, acknowledges their down runner, and runs as hard as they can back to him. Back to the one who has fallen. What do they do? They pick him up. Why? Again, because there is no trophy worth more than going back and helping a fallen brother. Amen. So while you're pursuing your calling, while you're pursuing your destiny, while you're pursuing those dreams, while you're pursuing Christ, while you're running this race, do not forget, do not forget to pick up those who have fallen along the way. It might not make any sense as of to why you're about to get to the top and you stop to acknowledge somebody who has fallen at the bottom and you go all the way back down to pick them up. It may make no sense that you would stop everything to acknowledge he or she who is down 
again. But you know what? It did make sense to Jesus. Because when he was on a way to heal a little girl who was sick, ultimately she was dying. And ultimately she does. But when a woman with a bleeding issue for 12 years reaches out and touched Jesus, Jesus didn't go, I don't have time for you, honey. He stopped everything to acknowledge this woman. Amen. Meanwhile, this girl dies. Yeah. But he's Jesus, man. Come on. <laughs> he heals this woman. He says, man, don't worry about it. She's not dead. Oh, she's sleeping. Let's go wake her up. That's right. And the Holy Spirit is putting it on your heart to stop and acknowledge I promise you, Holy Spirit isn't going to let this position die. Yeah. He's not going to let the anointing die. He's not going to let this person die. Acknowledge the father, and brother, and sister. Yeah. Pick them up. That's good. So that then they can begin to follow you as you follow Jesus and they can see the life that you're getting ready to walk into. It might not make sense to us, but isn't that the kingdom? Amen. You want to be the first one and you got to be last. That's right. don't make sense that we don't direct our own path. That we let Jesus direct our path. It don't make sense that we trust Jesus with the bottom of our heart, with all of our heart. It don't make sense that we have to acknowledge him in all that we do. It don't make sense that if I don't understand it, I just don't lean on my own understanding. No, it doesn't make sense. But that's what makes sense about it. Amen. It's Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. You're just amazing. You're wonderful. God, as Pastor John Hobbs oftentimes says, God, your name is Jesus, and you're all together, Lord. And indeed, you are, my Lord. And God, I thank you right now, Holy Spirit, as you are just making yourself known in this place, going through these aisles right now, I just pray that you begin to pull on the heartstrings of the people. God, who has sinned, not sins, but sins. The sin of not believing in you. Because Jesus, when we take care of the sin of not believing in you, the sin that the Holy Spirit will convict us of, then all those other sins will go away. So Lord, right now, does anybody here who don't know you begin to pull on their heart? Knock on it and let them know that if they let you in, you will come in and dine with them and they will dine with you. There's anybody here right now who don't know Jesus, I'm going to simply ask you to open up your heart right where you're sitting. We're going to say a prayer together. And in this prayer, we're going to say a prayer of repentance. Lord, indeed, you're all sin. But Paul says that if we confess in our mouth and believe in our heart, that we will be saved. That if we believe, that word believe means to make Jesus your heart's treasure. Making him your numero uno. He is number one. Nothing is above him. No one is above him. But everything and everyone is beneath him. It means that if he is your heart's treasure, that you would die to yourself daily and choose to live for him daily. It means that daily you will pick up your cross and daily you will walk out the faith, that daily you will abide in him and that daily he will abide in you. That's being a Christian. I don't understand it all, but I don't have to. I just acknowledge him and he directs my path because I trust him with all of my heart. If you want that today, you can cross over right now from death to life. Let's say a prayer. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. I need a Savior. And it's you. And it's you. I don't understand you. I don't understand you. But I'm here today. But I'm here today. To acknowledge you. To acknowledge you. To ask you. To ask you. To be my Savior. To be my Savior. I thank you. I thank you. Your answer is yes. Your answer is yes. So, Lord. So, Lord. Help me. Help me. To trust you. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. I'm, broken. I'm broken. I'm busted. I'm, busted. I'm, disgusted. I'm disgusted. But in you, but in you I, do understand I do understand that you, that you will put me back together. Back together. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, here I am. Here I am. Baptize me. Baptize me. Fill, me. Fill me. I'm all yours. I'm all yours. And, I and I thank you that you're all mine. And, you're all mine. and all God's kids said, Amen. Hallelujah. Church, stand to your feet as we begin to get back into worship.